Hey, everybody. Recording in progress. Recording is in progress, yes. <laughs> it's October 4th. You're here at the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Meeting for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager. Great to see everybody here. Looks like some familiar faces, which is awesome. Um, and you all know this already, but I'll tell you anyway. Of course, we know this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind and you know the you know the drill we we don't care if you have cameras on or off that's a thing you can just do do whatever makes you happy and that makes us happy in return so if you want to add your name if you haven't added it already and tell us the last time you saw the moon i think it was just a full moon not that long ago maybe a couple nights it wasn't yeah was it thursday or friday yeah maybe thursday yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. it was really bright here um, okay. Don, that was the, the question was kind of with you in mind being in Aww. the UK, living in, <laughs> living in well, living in Cleveland. I know, like it was kind of the same. It was, yeah. was just always cloudy. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. I just don't know, and I don't I don't go out a lot after dark, right? Like I'm just in meetings, and I can't see the moon from my office window. So yeah, yeah who knows? Who knows? <laughs> in Hopefully Cleveland, so in Cleveland, they always had this phrase: "Was there's not a sky in the clouds." <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty clear here, thankfully. That's my fear because you know the solar eclipse is rolling through North America in April of 2024, and it's coming really close to Cincinnati. So, um, oh. yeah, like I, I already have all my plans. I have at all cabins, um, multiple cabins <laughs> in case the weather is cloudy. Because like I'm gonna get some pictures, but. Um, that's cool. Yeah, that's my biggest fear is when it is cloudy for something like that. That really sucks because it only yeah. happens. When is it? It's in April Eight, 2024. 2024. There's one coming up this month that goes through Texas. Yeah. Is it a full or is it a partial? No, it's full. It's the full path of totality. It goes right through the middle of Texas. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Ooh, yeah. interesting. I only know that because the astronomer who was here during the 2018 or 17 eclipse whenever that was because it went right over Colombia in the path of totality she got recruited to San Antonio oh nice <laughs> to, to do their eclipse that's awesome so yeah do some do some looking up Matt it might be coming through you too I mean it goes across a big no spot. it doesn't look like it no it looks it's way like south it's, kind of like the, it's like the southeast gotcha. and then up to the east coast have you ever, have have you all ever seen that should be my question for next time have you ever seen a solar eclipse anybody yeah, I saw that one uh, a few years ago. Mine. Uh, it was cloudy. Yeah. Oh, it was cloudy for you? Yeah. No, I got to see the whole thing. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a plus recommend if you've never seen that before, make an effort because it will it literally blow your mind. Literally. Don't stare directly into it though. Do not do that. Yes. <laughs> Get the little special paper glasses. <laughs> Um, oh, Mary Blessing needs the minutes. Let's drop them. Oh, Matt just got it. Oh, thanks, Matt. Yep. Okay, let's get started. We've been chit chatting, everybody. Sorry. Um, let's talk about project badging, uh, proposed rollout. Who wants to yep. take? So that's that's me. I just wanted to keep people posted. So we have, um, you know, we're getting close to um, the project badging being deployed. I think the work that's being done by the design team and the back end team is really starting to come together um, in like like towards the end. So I just wanted to give people an update. So the the badging process kind of contains two things. One, it contains the scan for the DEI.md file. And upon scan, um, it issues a badge. There's also a follow-up uh, Inclusion, uh, inclusivity report that is provided to the applicants. So those are the two parts. Mm -hmm. So the scan yes. for the DEI.md file and the inclusivity scan. As we roll, as we roll out the project, like past pilot, we talked on Monday that we're just going to start with the scan for the DEI.md file, and not initially include the inclusivity report. We just, we really need to make sure that that works well. And so we're kind of phasing this in, in two parts. So I just wanted to let people 
no on that. And this also has a little bit to do with just our ability to support the process. Just doing one thing at a time and making sure we can do it and do it well is probably a good idea before we do two things at a time. Mm -hmm. That seems like a prudent course of action. So <laughs> I, rec I I support that that action very much. Yep. <laughs> are we uh, are we saying any uh, hard deadlines or timeframes yet? Or I think it's for moving past pilot. Yeah, I think um I think we're able to do it. I think it's um there were a few things that Ruth was fixing up with the website or Ruth's team, I should say, mm -hmm. was um, working on with the website. But so I think there's just a few minor technical things that need to be sorted. Um, yep. And then I think the question is about support. Um, how are we going to support the site? Um, and that's where I think we need to probably have a conversation with Sarah. Just because yeah. <clears throat> you know, I think we've discussed before the intention was not that we would be supporting it. Yeah. So um, we need to either have resources to support it or hand it off. Um, I think we're open to either. Agreed. And, cer and certainly we'll keep it running through through the pilot period. Um, it's just, you know, if it starts to scale up, our ability to support it might scale down. 100%. Yep. Okay, any questions on that or comments, anything anybody wants to bring up? I think it's pretty cool. So, I think it's uh, it, it's looking it's looking really good. I'll just say how, that. How are we going to get an answer to handing it off? Like where is that uh, Elizabeth at you? Can you I do? yeah, so Ruth and I have talked a, a tiny bit uh, to Sarah about that. Um, we okay. do have a couple of ideas, but she, um, wanted to check some things on her end. Um, so okay. yeah, I mean, she knows, we'll just say she knows that they're, that we are planning to hand it off like that, that we're done, like the pilot happens and then we're done. So whatever happens to it is up to whoever. So, um, okay. she is aware of that. And I think the, what she's working on now is figuring out if there's an internal team there that can take it and run with it or if it's going to be funding for us to do it okay. if and if we would be interested in that so okay. i think those are kind of the two ones that are uh in the running right now okay i have a i i feel like from our talk on monday our conversation mm -hmm. on monday in the badging group that we could the support for the dei.md file scan alone is not that intensive mm -hmm. the, it would just be like more infrastructure cost and maintenance of the mm -hmm. bot right i guess yeah, yeah and if something if something broke like we need to have somebody that's available to answer questions or yeah. whatever fix it <laughs> kick it and so that's partly why we're doing this rollout as well yeah, mm -hmm. I, I actually do have a question about that. So if something doesn't pass, what happens? So that's, Sean had alluded to that uh, with Ruth and her team on the text. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you enter the repository that is pointing to the DEI.md file, mm -hmm. so we did a, a quick test on chaos because we put one in the chaos repository and the community repository. Mm -hmm. And it it immediately passed. It said, I recognize the DEI.md file. And I got an email with a link to the to the badge. Awesome. So it was all good there. Um, but she's changing the text a little bit so that when you click submit, like the returned web page won't say, like, you passed and you're going to get a report. It'll just say, please look in your email for yeah. <laughs> whether it's passed or not. Okay, so it'll, it'll just then, get a separate email if it doesn't pass. Will it I say think, mm -hmm. that? I think it'll just say that you don't have a DEI.md file. I, I think yep. it's just, a, that's like the one requirement. You don't have a, yep. so the only way to yep. not pass the first, the bronze stage is if you don't have a DEI.md file. And well, as you might recall, yeah, go ahead. 
I was just gonna say, well, if, if you don't have the right headers or if the language is not right, like there are a couple. My of pass, I yeah, think. my understanding is that it's supposed to fail as well, but we have not tested that. We yes. should. Okay, got you. We got should. You. That was you're correct. That was always what we agreed to be the the passing criteria would include the headers. It would be more than merely the presence of a file. Yeah. Um, yep. And my under, I believe um, Enoch is doing that. Okay. However, uh, we have not tested that, so. Okay. We should just maybe, I'll just maybe shoot a message to Enoch and ask him about that. Okay. So Elizabeth, it would be pretty simple in the response. So it would simply be the web page would say, thanks, you'll get something from us soon. <laughs> and then one email will say, you passed, here's the badge. And the other email will say, you didn't pass, here could be a few reasons why. Okay, perfect. Awesome. That makes sense. I Because I'm just imagining yeah. people might have questions on why they didn't get why they didn't pass would be the only other and, and that would be a reason we would need support is why why I kind of went down that train. <laughs> we would need somebody to answer all this. Yeah. But the email, I think the email can be generic enough that's just like you either didn't have the file in the repository that you submitted or you didn't have the proper headers or okay. you had really weird text <laughs> in your yeah. <laughs> And just to, or, or the standard text you, you just used mm. our template and it's not. Yeah. Um, one other uh, clarification I guess I had was, or w w would like to know is, so for the pilot, we're still doing like a limited pilot, right? So we'll open it up officially and say, okay, if you want to be interested or if you are interested in being considered for the pilot, then we're gonna, just gonna take a small group, is that? still the case or are we doing whoever wants to try it can do it i'm feeling like it's the latter at this yeah. point okay. i am as well for for if all we're doing is rolling out the first part which is the dei.md file i think we can just test it on ourselves often enough okay like we can mess around with our own dei.md file and ensure that it fails for example if i remove communication transparency as one of the headers like okay. it should fail in that case. Okay. And um, we can just create our own sample repos and just. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Even from badging to the badging org, we can do it from them too. Yep. Um, and then we are keeping a list or are not keeping a list of all those that have been badged. We are. Okay. And the list changed a little bit. Okay. Um, so it's a table. And it'll it'll show the badge, it'll show the date, and it'll show the repository that was, you know, to, to where the DEI.md file is located. Okay. And that's it. Okay. I mean that's fair. And then people can they can look at the repository if they want more information. For a while there was a fourth column that was project name. And that that reminded me what I had to change in the DEI.md file. So they there was an abstraction from the repository to kind of infer the project. And as we talked about, um, like chaos obviously is kind of at the org level with, yeah. and we kind of look at our project at that org level. And as Don had pointed out, like at VMware, they had an org where each repository could necessarily represent a different project. And so there are these, different scenarios where projects could be represented in different ways. And so we were concerned that trying to abstract the project name from a single repository submission was not always going to reflect the project properly. So we decided yeah. to remove it. Okay. Yeah, so we don't ask it's... them to tell us what pro the project name is. Mm -mm. Okay. No, it's, it's... What's the, the critical feature to be under, to understand is that everything is designed and implemented to uh, uh, badge a repository. So to badge a project, I think the expectation is that uh, they would do their .github repository. Is that just a common practice matter? Is that required? It's not required. We, you, okay. can, you can put it in any repository. And so actually, if you open up that pull request that you merged, Elizabeth. Yeah. So like just I go that? to that. Go just go to the DEI.md file at this okay. point if it's merged. Yeah. Files changed. And just go to the file itself. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. 
Yeah, do you like how I uh, merged that literally right before the meeting started? Today? Yeah, so I, I, I merged. What are you talking about? Uh, yes, I've never done that. So I added. Um, do you see? Oh, right, just stay, stay right there. Don't, don't scroll down. So scroll back up to the top a little bit. So see where it says like DEI project statement. Include the project name logo here, and then I added that text below that that it said that says include a description of the scope of the DEI.md file. For example, does this DEI? We could work on this text a little bit, but asking somebody to declare. I think it's pretty clear. DEI.md file covers. Maybe I would change maybe entire organization to entire GitHub organization just to. Well, this could be on GitLab download. Oh, right. Entire, so, yeah. Platform organization, perhaps. Yeah. So I, just, I added that. And that, I, that remember when I was like, I'm supposed to be adding something to the DEI.md <laughs> file. Yeah. And I can't remember what it is. And that was it. Okay. And it, it, I was reminded. Got you. Uh, Yep. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, Sean, to your question. So here are the, like the recommendations on kind of where to put the DEI. See those additional recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very generic. I like that. Mm -hmm. So this is just recommendations on where to provide it. And then the last thing that was in this PR was there was some feedback provided for communication transparency metric. Is number two. And there it's just, it's now there. So you could take a look at that as well, but I think you did. So quick question on that. So some of those, um, some of those recommendations for changes, do, do any of those need to go back to the metric itself? What do you mean? So were there anything that they brought up that we had not thought of in the metric? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Like how we give examples in the metric itself. Yeah, we could, that's completely fair. I mean, I, I just didn't know if there was anything that was like, oh yeah, we didn't even think about this thing in our mm -hmm. metric. We, uh, I, yeah, I don't think I wrote the initial set of these like A through I as we're okay. looking at here as examples from the metric. I had just written them kind of as things we were doing oh, in the chaos okay. project. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know if anything that, because um, I knew people had been adding recommendations, and so if there was anything that kind of opened a can of worms in our metric that we had. Yeah, not. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, cool. and I, so honestly, at this point, we have the things at the top that ask for, you know, a logo or a name, um, uh, some sort of description of coverage for the scope of the DEI MD file. Um, we then have the four metrics with sample descriptions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the some recommendations at the end. So I honestly think this is complete. And then there are instructions on the website or guidelines, guidance for people on the website of like, make sure you include these things, make sure you keep all your headers. I'm like, not sure about that. Okay. Uh, I, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that either, actually. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe let's just check, make sure that we're giving that advice somewhere. Uh, I think that that is an important action item. Maybe ask ask if Oops. Actually, Ruth is on the call. She may know. Is Ruth on the call? Ruth yeah. is on the call. Ruth, do you know? Off the top of your head, sorry to put you on the spot. And if you're not at your desk, that's totally fine. And you may not know off the top of your head, but fine. Okay, she might be away. Okay, that's cool. No, no biggie. Sorry, did you say my name? <laughs> sorry, Ruth. <laughs> it's okay. We, just, we put <laughs> we're putting you on Go the spot. Ahead. We were just wondering if you know if the badging website. Um, for project badging gives guidance on how to complete the DEI.md file, like making sure that people know they have to all four of those headers. Um, so we, we do have like a page that kind of, let me just get that, that describes what the DEI.md file is. But I don't know if it explicitly guides people. Let me just open that page up and see. Um, 
and there is this page. I'm sending it to the chat. This one. So we have like a temp it links back to the templates. So mm. does it pull up on your on your browser? Yeah, it does. Why is it not working? I'm not sure. Do you want to share so we can see? I'll stop sharing. Okay. It's it's a problem. It's not working on your own. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like, I don't know, hidden or something. Please, can you refresh? Yeah, let me refresh. Why is it not working? Okay. I don't know. Um, I think it says I can't share. That's weird. It's not working. Is it working for any other person? Somebody else want to try it and see? Maybe it's just me. You're working too? It's, I'm just getting access to my GitHub account back today. It's not working for me either. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm not logged into GitHub. Maybe I'm I have share my screen. Oh, no. It's just, I, it, I mean, it should just. It, oh. I don't know. Why does it work? Interesting. Yeah, no, it's just a white screen, like a blank yeah. screen for me. Yeah, it's, it's like that thing where you say it works on my computer. And that's fine. Okay. Um, so this is how the file the page looks like. I'm going to ask why it doesn't work on other computers. But yeah, this is how it looks like. And then it also like gives the template. This template links to this link is not broken. It, leads it looks like to... you might be using Chrome. Is that right? Or is that Firefox? Yeah, I... No, I'm using Chrome. So it might be it might be a browser. Yeah, I'm using thing. Chrome too, but I'm not. I haven't updated my Chrome, so maybe. We'll and I saw your lips moving, but I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I'm using Firefox. Oh, I'm using Chrome, but I haven't updated it, so maybe that's a problem. Oh, okay, I'll check that. But this should link. This is a broken link. I'll fix this. This should link to all in open the di.md file in all in open source. So it gives okay. a template. We, so we may just want to explicitly say that you need to have those four headers if you're applying for a badge, okay. you know? Maybe like a note down here. Things to note. And make yeah, sure, could... just make sure they, um, you know, fill in all the blanks and don't leave project name everywhere. Could we, um, maybe another option, like in the, dei.md file itself if you go back to that whoever's sharing who's sharing ruth is sharing i'm the one sharing but like this link is broken so i just... know but can... okay is it well, on the on the dei.md file i'm wondering if if we could um work the markup a little bit better so the yeah, like the one on the all in open source. Sorry. Uh, Where is it? Yep. Okay. Um, so, yep. So now that we have like I think the content completed, mm -hmm. maybe we should like do things like see where it says include your project like we should put like <laughs> mandatory <laughs> colon <laughs> you know mandatory like we okay. can some, some way to get either in comments in the markdown or in the file itself you know and like we could say like remove this later <laughs> that last part so a little bit more guidance in the de identity yeah. file i've been just mostly focusing on the content yeah okay yeah i'm wondering too if we need a whole separate document to your point matt about this additional recommendations at the bottom because i'm guaranteeing people will just leave that in and then that would be kind of maybe weird would it because right. it's supposed to be removed yeah well we've done with a lot of the cncf templates that that we've built for cncf projects mm -hmm is most of them we have a template which just has the stuff that they need to fill out and customize. And then we also have a separate how-to document. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 
So this will go into how to like this additional recommendation part. Well then, yeah, well actually this this whole document would be closer to a how-to. That's what, what a lot of this is. It's like, here are examples of how to think about talking about inclusive leadership. This is how to think about talking about newcomer experiences. Yeah, I can send you, I can send you some examples of what we've done. Okay. So you can see. Okay. Yeah, we do kind of have the guidance and the template interspersed. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had that too, and it created all kinds of problems, which is why we ended up separating them out. Okay, that's a good idea. I'm going to put that as a, just a note on our, on our minutes here. then that would make it, I think, a little easier mm -hmm. for Ruth as well, because then on the web page, you can just say, please refer to these two documents, the DEI.MD template and the DEI.MD how-to guide. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right. Oh, thanks, Don, for putting these links in here in the minutes. Awesome. Okay. Okay, cool. I will share again. Thanks, everybody. And then um, Matt does have another item on here. What would it take to support GitLab repos? Yeah, so this is a, you know, it's a kind of an ongoing conversation. Folks at uh, GitLab have an interest in this project as well. Uh, and right now we support GitHub repos, which is completely fine. I'm just kind of wondering out loud what the complexity would be to include scans for DEI.MD files that are located in GitLab repositories. I imagine, I believe it would be a incremental lift. It would certainly not be anything on the scale of the project that built all this. Okay. I mean, that's just very high level, but it's a, effectively the file structure is the same. The validation would be the same. The emails that get sent would would possibly have to and permissions, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe it's 10 to 15 percent of the effort of this total project at the most. Okay. That's an estimate. And no, I get I'd you. want Enex validation. So for sure 15 percent. Well 10. I think it's I'm no no kidding. more than 15, yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. uh, <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. Oh, that's fair. Um because I think this is something that we want to think about but i mean if, if if you are correct in that estimate that would realistically push back our ability to start for quite some time i mean i know it's not a lot but like yeah months well i how I've, much we've done so far yeah well and i think um getting enoch in a conversation about this would really kind of yeah, let it allow us to itemize okay. um, everything, and I suppose we would need some web and web web developer uh, input as well, because presumably we would allow people to log in with their GitLab account to validate one of those. Okay. So that, yeah. Yeah. They, they're both OAuth too, so. Okay. Ruth, yeah. you get up. Go for it. Okay, so I think another thing is also what GitLab is trying to do if they want to go through this process we have, like using the website and then the authentication and all that stuff, or do they want to implement the di.md file at you know the repo level? There are also those two options, right? And yes, I do agree with Sean. It will take some effort from... Enoch and even like on the website part, like we have to build in that authentication with GitLab. So okay. yeah, also need to understand what GitLab wants, like how do they want to implement this as well? Do they want projects? Because like there are projects on GitLab as well. Do they want their like projects, open source projects on GitLab to 
go through this process or they just want to encourage people to use the GI.md file? I think it's the former. I think they want to have GitLab projects be able to submit on the website. Okay. Cool. And I, I think we can have like a conversation to be enough and then okay. websites seem to understand. Okay. Um, and I would recommend that, you know, in that conversation, I don't want to like Enoch's on the call, but like this isn't necessarily a to do. I think it's a request. And if we're going to go down this path, I would encourage folks from GitLab to participate as well, because I think they would have some really good insight on how to best architect this from their end. I'm sure they can answer a lot of questions that um, a lot faster than trying to figure them out. Yeah, I saw, I saw a meeting invite to. Yeah, so hopefully if, if that's the functionality we want to provide, we can get support for that as well. Whether, not, even if not money necessarily, I'm just thinking, you know, people contributing. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thanks everybody. Do we wanna go ahead and move on to onboarding courses? Anything else with the project badging? before we move on. All good. All right. Um, I can say personally, I don't think we've made progress because I have not set up a kickoff meeting yet. Okay. So um, maybe next week, if people are around and available, I'll, I'll send around a doodle. I think I might've had that uh, okay. action item last time, but I have not done that yet. But not, okay, Elizabeth. Send a doodle around to these four. So the four of us will meet first, and then we'll start bringing more of that into this meeting. I think that's our plan. We just kind of need to want to get organized with what all okay. parts are. So yeah, thanks. Would um, Yiga Peculiar Sean? Would you agree with that? Is that yeah, fair? I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for giving some feedback on this Open Source 101 that Matt has started. Um, that's great. Anybody else wants to work on this as well? Here are the slides. And I think we're pretty open to just building these out more. This is kind of a rough draft, so. Yep. Mostly we're looking for things after the break. Is that right? Is that? Um, yeah, that's, that'd be a, Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay, anything else about that before we move on? All good. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to put this back on the agenda to see if we have any uh, update. Do we need to go through this again? I'm hoping Anita's on the call. I did not. I don't want to put you on the spot. Hi. Okay. Um, so from the feedback we got the last time, we actually got a lot of input, and I thought we could discuss it today if yeah. we have time. We do. Awesome. Okay, so um, I went through the feedback, and I really thought these were like great um, input. Thanks to everyone that dropped in the thoughts. But I just want to discuss under the implementation. So um, in terms of the implementation, are we going to say that this particular um, points listed out can be effective for different areas or scenarios which these conflicts may arise, like on the organizational level, in the community level? Will this serve? I just want to get like more thoughts on that and any other um, points that we can make regards to this metric. Good. So the, we've written metrics that are of different types. And some of, so some of the suggestions about the conversation threads and the facilitative discourse practices. So those would be using, this would be a, that'd be a method of using trace data to try to infer the probability of uh, conflict resolution not going well. Some of the other things that are below that with the little dark circles around them instead of the dashes, this is more, these are more characteristics of metrics that we've developed 
that provide guidance and perhaps uh, ask for surveys, uh, survey questions. So less derivable from trace data and more about trying to encourage or facilitate positive practices around something. And it, like if I was to, having reflected on this, I think if I was to pick between one of these two approaches, because I don't, I'm thinking including them both in the same metric could be hard. I might start with the advice and survey approach. And I don't know what other people think. What was the, what's the advice approach? The first so if you, if you scroll up there, it's um, like survey. So these aren't survey, uh, survey questions are below those black dots, sorry. Um, but this is like, you know, just asking the question, do you provide advice on conflict resolution? Are there uh, people getting trained to do it? Uh, do, do members know how conflicts are resolved? Is there a documented process for mediation? So I, yeah. these are the kind of advisory things that we have in other DEI metrics. I gotcha. And then the survey below is uh, a non-trace data-based evaluative approach. And what's under trace data, I think, is possibly should be scoped as part of a different metric, because otherwise I think this metric would be trying to accomplish too many different things. It would be confusing. I like that. Those are my thoughts. I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I'm, at, I'm sort of stating my thoughts, but looking for differences, agreement, whatever. I'm not at the authority here. So you, these are more, they're speaking more towards conflict identification. Yes, exactly. Like, like these are strategies I would use in like, for example, Augur to um, identify possible or probable um, events that have conflict associated with them. So it's an awareness generator. However, that doesn't really fix, that doesn't, I mean, I think most projects are probably at a, at a stage for advice more than evaluation. Or identification right now. I mean, Anita, I'll, I'll I want to hear what you have to think or what you have to say about that. Do you think that that would be part of this metric? Is for especially for large product projects that would that be helpful in when you're talking about conflict resolution to have a an automated way to surface some potential problem areas? What do you think? I mean, um, yeah, some communities may have identified the um, areas which this conflict originated or the where the conflicts are and are looking for how to go about it but then there are also communities that haven't identified it i mean so should we take out the trace data completely i don't know i think it would be good to have both of them there in case communities actually want to, because these are actually good inputs as well. Do others have thoughts on that? If if we should keep it or I guess my thought is if we can just be, yeah, keep it. I'm I'm with Ruth and Anita. Uh, we just say, you know, maybe like and this probably isn't proper, but like step one and following. Oops. Well, we can also see potential to identify like potential conflict identification because like it might like it, it might not be that longer conversation threads are like I think I don't, um going going back to the like the title of this metric which is conflicts conflict resolution and mediation and the question which is how do open source maintainers address conflict that may arise while collaborating on a project this feels like um what we have here actually to me feels more like two separate metrics so like the trace data is how do we identify whether a project is has conflict, mm -hmm. um, and then it feels like it feels like maybe this one should be more focused on how they address the conflict. But maybe we need a separate metric um, that goes along with this one, which is how do you identify 
the contact uh, conflict. So I, th I think what we're struggling with is this feels like two separate metrics to me. Yeah. I don't know if others agree. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking this part right here would be a really cool blog post and then include that blog post under references. That's what I'm thinking. And we could even take the stuff yeah. that you've highlighted and maybe use it to create uh, um, a metric around how do you identify conflict within a within a met, uh, within a community. Yeah, I I think it could be a separate. I, I like the idea of a blog post because it it seeds mm -hmm. ideas for looking for yeah. it. Um, and I'd be happy to participate in writing that. Um, and I also think. I think there may be another metric here that we can put on the metric queue that we keep. My thoughts. <clears throat> yeah, because all of these kind of speak to the actual resolution, um, but it might be helpful for folks have that okay so what do we want to do do we want to pull this out and make it a separate reference and a metric so i think this is really good and mm -hmm. especially if we can show examples of how that looks in real actual data yeah okay i'll just make a little note here So, um, conflict identification using trace data. And potential. Do we, uh, I, I don't want to lose this. Where should we plop that? Maybe in the minutes? Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. Uh, maybe just maybe just leave it and let um okay. let Anita pull it out and put it wherever she needs to put it. Okay. And we'll just put yeah. it like this. Like, a little placeholder here. Under, I guess that would be under what governance? Where do we have either that or project and community? I do can do it this? once we decide. Okay. Do we have the current one? Conflict resolution? No, I was going to put that in here right now. Got you. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll let you do the spreadsheet action. Okay. Since you are the king of spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a little crown. I feel like that should come with a crown. I know, right? <laughs> king of spreadsheets. That's what I'm thinking of. Do you know those whole competitions on spreadsheets? Do you know this? Yeah. Yeah, my brother participates in those. Yeah. Okay, what? Yeah. What are you talking? What? <laughs> like competitive? What are you? Yes, competitive competitive doing, spreadsheet like, competitions. So, like, if your pivot table is cooler than someone else's pivot well, it's table, way beyond pivot tables. Oh wow! Details, but yeah, yeah. He's. I, I can find out for you, Sean, if you're interested. I can ask. No, I'd <laughs> yeah, I would like to know a little bit more about this if you have a link. Uh, because I think we could probably use this. We could probably use a spreadsheet to manage the navigation on a small submarine. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I will find out because I never even asked him about it. I didn't. I don't know if he won. He must not have won, or he would have been, you know, in your face well. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he would have known if he had. Won. Probably would have been. Yeah, bragging to his little sister about how awesome he is for sure. Absolutely. You're probably uh, doing like mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a competitive person except for when it comes to him. So yeah. he's the only person that can bring that out of me. Mm -hmm. You know how siblings are. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm also going to put um, that add to the spreadsheet. Very good. Does it? Crown. Oh, it's no, because that, that was the point is that there's people that have competitions on this. And all I do is add rows. <laughs> and like formatting stuff. I think yeah, no, I. Yes, and then yes. I have seen sophisticated spreadsheets, but it's been a long time. 
Okay. Thank you, Anita, for your work on this. Um, sorry, going back to this, uh, where is my tab? Here it is. Um, is this ready to go? Do we want to give it one more week? Anita, how are you feeling about this? Um, well, um, for me, I went over it and I think it's good, but I think we should leave it a few more, one more week to see if we can get more inputs from the community. Okay. Okay, so we'll just say um, at all of us one more week to comment on this metric. Oh, there's the link. Okay, I know we're out of time, but really quick, we'll just look here. <laughs> yes, it's that is. Oh, I wonder if he's going to this. It's an eSport. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> an eSport? grand. Look at that. And the world, yeah, starts already on October 6th. Oh, yeah. Dear God. <laughs> Such Man. A, you could sign up now. I, I, yep. am, I am now very curious about this. I have to yeah, say. me too. Uh, I got to ask him. I will, I will like come back with a full report Yeah, next week for sure. Oh, yeah. This is serious stuff. Oh, my God. I, can't, I don't okay. even understand the friggin this i don't even understand what's going on here much less how to yeah uh, just feels like something the onion would publish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i wonder how much tickets are sorry okay we can go oh. 50 bucks all right <laughs> okay also before we go thank you to whoever added the the deaf and hard of hearing um thing to the agenda because i meant to do that and i forgot because that's developed within the ncf group that i i work in I saw yesterday, like on the LinkedIn post, and it was pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good doc. I think we should probably look at it with respect to badging. I think that's a good idea. Oh, this right here. Yes, maybe we can look at it next week because I think we're out of time, right? Yes, we are. We are. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, would we include? Sorry, would we include that in the accessibility metric that we have already? I think we're seeing to look at it and decide what to do with it. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. All right. Thanks everybody for a great Bye, meeting. Everybody. We got yeah, thanks everyone. We will Bye. see you next week. Bye.